why am I doing this? Welcome to another edition, a special edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is one I said I'd never do, and look at me now. The great Satan himself, Heineken. A couple of people, well, a few, quite a few people have asked me to review this, and as well as Carlsberg as well. And I said I wouldn't do it because it was just going to be a rant. And then one subscriber did say, and for the life of me, I can't remember who you are but you made a very good point it basically said why do you review these beers in green bottles why don't you just buy them in the cans i think that was after the cronenberg review so if you look at the comments there the fella's name is on there i'm saying you look on there it should have been me that was looking on there but there you go we are where we are but i've got some in a can so it's not going to be a rant about skunkiness which is good because even though it boils my piss that Heineken comes in green bottles, and I'll get onto that in a bit. I, I, have, I do have memories of this, and I do remember this years ago. Uh, when I first left school, and I probably should have been drinking, but I left school at 16. Well, no, I actually left at 15. I was booted out, basically, and I had no exams, nothing, and I basically went out and got a job more or less straight away in a cash and carry fuck i lasted two weeks i got sacked for lying to the manager and then it was here's a little story for you i'm gonna go off a tangent i got that job i got sacked within two weeks i didn't tell my mum she would have battered me she would have got out the biggest wooden spoon and she had a, a fucking selection of them for depending on the crime this would have been the special occasion one which was like a fucking something you use in a fucking brewery to stir the mash but yeah she would have beaten the living shit out of me even at fucking 16 yeah i know i know but I got the uh, I got the sack from that place. I got a, a job at another place that lasted about a week. I got the sack from there. Um, I got another job. This was uh, loading and unloading lorries for uh, returns for mother care, and that saw me through Christmas. And I got a job straight after that as well because I, I got the sack from there about five months there i got the sack from there but i didn't tell my mum about any of these jobs and i remember she actually rang up the cash and carry looking for me and they said i was left she said well where's he gone uh we'll have to look at the references and they they worked it out she had to work her way and it took her nearly the whole day can't remember what she wanted me for but it took her nearly the whole day to work out actually where i was that was in the good old days when you could walk into another job when, when i'm in the good old days i'm talking about the mid 80s but yeah and i've not stopped working since but there you go and I, as I say, I don't remember uh, when I started working at the cash and carry, there was a fella there, Jim, real nice fella, used to live at the bottom of my road. And because uh, this cash and carry was local, it was in Tottenham. Bookers, if anyone's interested, I don't know whether it's still there, it's on Queen Street. Uh, there was a pub across the road called the Free Compasses. And we used to go in there and play pool. And then he said, why don't you come down to the, you know, the pub down, down near his way? I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Because there was two pubs down there. I don't know whether it's the one that closed or not. But it was a Whitbread pub. And you had two choices. You had Heineken or you had Stella. And of course, me being the fucking little bravado, five foot and a fag packet, oh man, I went for the Stella. And boy, did I used to get messed up on that stuff. But I always remember Whitbread. You had a choice. In Whitbread pubs, you had a choice. It was either Heineken or Stella. And occasionally, Oh, that was it. I worked for Burberry. That was the other job I was trying to think of. I got sacked from there. And I got sacked from there for being drunk. And uh, Burberry used to be in Edmonton. And there was a pub just down the road. It's gone now called the Cook's Ferry Inn. Quite a famous pub. Well known. Used to have a lot of bands in there and all that. And it was just down the road from the Royal Standard. You could sort of walk. If you was drunk, you could walk down to the Royal Standard. But we used to go there at lunchtime. And there was a fella there. Um, was it Andy? His name was. He was huge. Massive fella. 
He looked like, you know, the archetypal scouser off Henry Enfield. He, he, his hair was like that. He looked like the fucking Gorgon with all the snakes in his hair. He's the first person I ever saw who could open up his throat and he could swallow four pints. He was massive. He was huge. I'm sure the geese is dead now. But he could swallow a pint in about four or five seconds. And he used to do that over lunchtime, have about four or five Stellas, and he'd go back drunk. I'd have a couple, and I'd be, of course, at 16, I would be fucking bouncing off the walls. And I remember once on a Friday, we all stayed late, and I came back, and I could fucking hardly stand up. And the, the boss just looked at me, and he went, don't you ever come back to this place again. <laughs> that was me. Another fucking, honestly, I was, for the first year of my fucking working life, it was just a fucking job, 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 job. My CV must have looked, must have looked like a fucking a charge sheet for some old criminal. But there you go. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about my employment history anymore. This is not a fucking job interview, all right? What was our point? Uh, yeah, basically, the point I'm trying to make was Heineken was widely available in Whitbread pubs on tap and in bottles as well. And I do remember always avoiding it and going for the Stella because that was the stronger beer. Heineken used to be about 3.5%. It was very, well, I would say very low ABV, but it was low ABV. Maybe I should have done that when I worked at Burberry's. Anyway, more on that later. Uh, yeah, so... I do remember Heineken from my childhood. A little bit, little history about the um, about the brew. Before I get onto the history, uh, I just put up a review about the triple Carmelite, and I got a, a few complaints about that. About the uh, I had a there was a the reason I put it the background music on there. There was a really annoying hum. I'm not sure whether it's coming from a bad earth on the extension lead that I've got, or whether it's the fridge I've got there. Sometimes it. it creates a hum but some nights are worse than others and I used to record a little bit of stuff in here as well and the fucking interference was terrible so that's why the background noise is there it's not going to be a feature on there because you get copyright strikes and all that if YouTube pick up on it so I'm not going to put background noise it was just because that one was particularly fucking loud you wouldn't have heard the review it would, would have been really off-putting so as off-putting as the music is it's better than the fucking buzzing so there you go anyway Little history about the brewery. They have been going, well, let, actually they've, they can trace their history back to 1864. A fellow called Adrian Heineken, believe it or not, he bought a brewery that was in Amsterdam called, and I've got to get my pronunciation right on this one, De Huyberg, I think that's how it's pronounced. Flemish mates who are gonna fucking piss themselves laughing at this, fuck off now. <laughs> I don't mean it, honestly. But that translates roughly to the Haystack Brewery, and that was very popular in the working class districts of Amsterdam, very popular beer. But Adrian Heineken bought that out, and in 1873, he hired in a fella called uh, Dr. Elion, who was a student of Louis Pasteur, the famous chemist, and um, they devised the yeast for Heineken, and they first debuted, de it first made it de its debut in 1875 and it won a few awards and the first two awards used to be on the old can i don't know whether they've still got one now they've taken it off here now i will oh no they haven't actually they've got a uh, diploma de honor amsterdam at 1883 uh, that was the i think that was the second award that they won the first one was like a gold award and that's that was the other one that was on there but i remember they used to have medals on the label that can has changed now obviously I remember in the 80s they used to have green cans and it was all green so hence the reason why I think they used the, uh, the the green bottles but a little bit about the green bottles in 2013 if you, any of you obviously live in the Netherlands but if, if any of you have been over to Amsterdam to see the tulips <laughs> not for the other stuff the illegal stuff that goes on there well not illegal but the illegal stuff that goes on here over there that would be illegal here uh, you, will, you will have noticed that before 2013, the beer came in brown bottles. But they've changed it to green now, so all the bottles are green. And that is a fucking crying shame. But we are where we are. They won an award uh, for creative marketing in, not so long ago, actually, creative marketing. Fucking hell, if ever there was a, a fucking contradiction in terms, creative marketing. Fucking hell, and otherwise bullshit in the brains of our people. Wait, if anyone here is in advertising or marketing, kill yourself. Seriously, though, if you are, do. Oh, well, anyway, stop. But the good side of Heineken, if there is one. Now, they own a lot of pubs in the UK. Worldwide, I don't know, but in the UK, they used to own 2,400. 
that is a fucking lot of pubs. That is potentially a lot of pubs that could go bust. Now, regardless of what you think about Heineken, if they're keeping 2,400 pubs open, that's not a bad thing. The beer may be shit, but in some regions, the pub is the heart of the community, or it used to be. I don't know what it's going to be like now with these fucking energy builds. Don't get me started on that. Jacob Reeks Mog, what he said the other day about fucking paid holiday. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not going to bring politics into this channel, but fuck. And it boils my piss when I see that fucking knob, that beer hooligan going on about Margaret Thatcher. You shit ass. Anyway, calm down. I said this wasn't going to be a rent. Anyway, th this lot were particularly, as all breweries were, were particularly hit hard by COVID and they made a big loss. And that loss was in the millions. 240, nearly $248 million in a year. That is a fucking hefty loss for any business to take. And again, the downside of that was 8,000 people lost their jobs. Now, you can say what you like about macro brewers, and I do. However, and I've said this on a few videos, I would hate to see a macro brewer go bust. Not because of the beer. Well, that's a bit of a lie, because at the end of the day, that is brewing history. But more importantly, that's people's jobs. And I never revel in anybody losing their job. It could happen to anyone. And it's fucking traumatic. Some people might say, oh, it's easy to find a job. Depends where you live, depends what your skill set is. It's not that easy. And yeah, so macro brewers, yeah, the beer I will rent if it tastes crap. However, employing a large number of people, running a few pubs is the upside of being a macro brewer. So it's swings and roundabouts, as they say in the UK. They have a very big portfolio. And this big portfolio is so big that I've had to write it down. Some of the well-known brands that you know and you drink, or you may drink, or you know people that drink, are owned by Heineken. Now, I've lost count of the amount of beers that I've said on this channel that are owned by Heineken, not just from the UK, but from abroad as well. So I've had to make a list. And on this list are the beers that are only readily available in the UK. So. Let me just read them out to you. So these are the, the beer brands that are owned by Heineken. Foster's, Amstel, Lagunitas, Beer and Moretti, Red Stripe, Desperados, Brixton Brewery, Duca's IPA, John Smith's, Cronenberg 1664, Murphy's, Newcastle Brown, Sagres, Tiger, and Beavertown. Now that might read as a, a rogues gallery of bad beer, but that beer is keeping people employed and some people do drink that. And despite my best efforts and the efforts of every other, well, any beer reviewer worth their salt, there are still gonna be people who drink that beer. And if there's a demand, they'll keep producing it. It's sad in a way, but if they're happy and it keeps people employed, then who am I to really say that that's a bad thing? It does annoy me that the fact that I think if people did try better beer, they probably wouldn't drink that, but that's by the by. Anyway, have I gone off on one? Not yet. Let's get this beer investigated. Right, this is a 5.68 milliliter can. Always wary about stuff that's in a five, six, eight mil bottle or can. There's, there's a reason they're doing it. Alcohol is 5%, never used to be. That used to, well, it used to be on draft. It used to be like, I think 0.5, I think it is. That red star is everywhere on their beer. Now, if you're a fan of sport, you know Heineken support or sponsor a lot of sporting events. They, uh, I think they do the UEFA league. They used to do uh, the rugby as well, Heineken rugby, well known and all that. And they sponsor some other things as well. So they're quite quite big on that front as well. And that's about it really. No brew sheet, of course. They, they wouldn't do that. Um, they say, what is this? Um, quality, pure malt lager. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Now, despite what I've said about, you know, employing people and everything, I'm going to review that beer and I'm going to give you an honest review. Thankfully, it won't be skunky. So this will be the beer on its own merit. 
the next, or I wouldn't say the next best thing, but the, the other thing, the other way I could review it, or the next best way to review it, I should say, get it right for fuck's sake, it's been a long day. The next best way to review it would be to have it on a pump and I'm not really gonna walk into a pub and do that. So there you go. Let's get this open, let's get it checked out. Now, I don't want to cast aspersions, but I'm using a little glass because the rest may go down ye olde sink. But here we go. Right. Morrison's do this. 575 for four. Now that, if it was good lager, oh, that smells really grainy. That smells like a beer that hasn't been lagered for any reasonable length of time. And I imagine the scale they brewed out on they just get it out the fucking door and that's it. Right, it's really grainy. It's just, oh, that really is. It's like bitter, bitter grain. There's a lemon citrus to it as well, but it's like an astringent lemon. It's not like a decent German Hellas type lemon. And then it evaporates into nothing. The head dissipates. Let me see if I can get a bit more of a head on it. It's very, very fizzy. And the head just dissipates and dissipates. And this room is not that hot, not as hot as it used to be. This is cold, it's coming out of the fridge. I'm glad to see the Craft Beer Channel have just done a, a video on beer temperature, the correct temperature to drink beer. I'm glad other reviewers are doing that. I did that about a year ago and I thought I was in the minority about being the only one that was keen on beer temperature. But there, I saw they're doing it today. I think that's brilliant. I think more people need to be aware of what temperature to, bring, to drink beer. So if any other beer reviewers are watching, please do one, do your research, do one and just, just get it out there. Anyway. Bottoms up. It's weird, there's, there's an astringency to that, like a bitter tannin. And you shouldn't really get tannin in a beer. I mean, if you, if you lager your beer, and certainly if you do a secondary fermentation, that, that will just eat up all that shit. If you let it lager for a long time, you get rid of that horrible, it's like a bitter, bitter backbone to it. And to be honest, I can see why the green bottles on this stuff, I can see why people go for the cans as well, because there's a bitterness there. I know it's not skunked, but it's got that bitterness, if you know what I mean, that Sort of, if you, if you can you imagine biting into a green leaf off of a tree? It's like that type of bitterness. There's like a little, a little hint of brewing syrup in there as well, and oh, it just. It generally just isn't that good. A little bit of sweet corn. I must admit, my uter ain't too clever today. I woke up with a bit of a, a bit of a snotty uter, but I can still smell. And yeah, there's it's like a like a bitter corn, if you can imagine that. Oh, it just it, it just isn't good at all. I suppose if it was ice cold, and I do mean ice cold like your hands are sticking to the metal on the can, I could probably drink it in a, on a really hot day at a barbecue if there was nothing else but. It just isn't nice. And that bitterness is getting worse. <clears throat> and I'm saying I would drink this on a cold day I'm doubting myself now, I don't think I would, because that horrible astringency, which I think, again, as I'm gonna reiterate this point, 
I think we're, they serve up the stuff in the bottles and I would imagine, I could be wrong, but I imagine the bottles are the ones that sell the most. And if you've ever been to any sporting event, you'll see that they sell, certainly over West Ham, the old West Ham Grand, they used to sell bottles and it was like the plastic green bottles, have you ever seen them? They used to sell them in them and they were fucking horrible. Really not nice at all. And that was all they had. It was either that or Tetley's smooth, or Tetley's cream flow, I think it was. But it was fucking vile. In the end, I opted for the draft Guinness, and that weren't great either. But this stuff, it just doesn't smell nice. Oh, hang on. Hang on. There's a bit of a, a weird smell to it now. It's like a sweet, like confectionery smell. Which is weird. And that's, it's almost like a, I was reading about this today, some of the nasty flavors you get from yeast, which are classed as undesirable. And that's like a, a sweetish. Now I've seen other people describe it as pear drop or um, like a fruit salad type. I wouldn't quite call it that, but it's got that confectionery sweetness to it. There used to be sweets, boiled sweets called rhubarb and custard. I don't know if you remember that, them, so I should say. There's a, there's a little hint of that, and it just doesn't taste nice. It just doesn't smell nice either. I'm not going to drink anymore. Some people drink this, and I have to say, I don't know anybody who buys it regularly. I think how Heineken make their money is obviously from their pubs, but I think the sporting events and the stadia that they sponsor, they obviously, well, I think that the, the London Stadium, that sells Amstel, so I think they must have a, a deal going on with the owners. But I don't know anyone who buys Heineken regularly or drinks it regularly even. I know people that drink Foster's regularly. I don't know anyone who drinks Carlsberg. I know people drink Stella regularly. I used to know I used to know people that drank Bex. Now I don't know anyone who drinks Bex norm, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, mainly it's just Foster's or Carlin. Fucking sad state of affairs. But this stuff, it's crap. And that confectionery smell is getting a little bit stronger. The, 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 the warmer this gets, that's not something you want to be smelling in beer. That's an off flavour. Or an off aroma, I should say. And it ain't nice. So what does he do? Take another mouthful? You fucking dick. Nah, I don't like it. It's bollocks. That ain't nice. Fuck off. So what is the verdict on Heineken? Well, it's going down the sink. Does that tell you enough? I thought it was going to be a rant, but I've managed to cal calm it down. And I think the reason it's, I've calmed it down is because it's not in a green bottle. So the subscriber, I don't know who you are. If I look you up, I'll put your name here. Thank you for the suggestion. Logical, Captain, when you think about it. But, soppy bollocks, just bought it out of the bottle. Um, I may review some of the other beers if I can get them in a can. I did see Carlsberg in a can today, if you want me to review that. But it's just going to be me saying, this is shit as I thought it would be. Now I'm going to pour the rest of that in a glass because it's going to be easier to pour down a sink. And I'm not taking another fucking mouthful out of that because there's just no point. There really is no point in that beer. Uh, Heineken, for all the positives that you, they do, employing 8,000 people, keeping 2,400 pubs running, and I think there may be a pub uh, just local to me that's well, I know it does sell Heineken. I don't know whether Heineken own it or not, but <clears throat> they do some good. But your flagship beer, mate, is fucking rubbish. But I, I, I'm convinced they don't care. This is just a, I don't know, this, is, this reminds me of Amway. Do you remember Amway, like a pyramid scheme? And they were not really concerned with the products that they sold. They were more concerned with getting more people to sell the products. Now, that may not be a very good analogy, but 
the bit about not really caring about the products. That's what, that's the impression I get when I drink this. I know it's brewed on a huge scale, and to brew a quality beer on a huge scale is a big ask. ABM Bev have done it. Zupla, for all its faults, it contains corn, which seems to be a big thing with ABM Bev now. I don't know why, but it's it's becoming more and more of a thing with ABM Bev. I'm seeing it in a lot more of their ingredients. I don't know whether that's a cost-cutting exercise or what, but they can brew a reasonably drinkable, I wouldn't say great, but a reasonably drinkable beer on a big scale. Uh, Heineken, your flagship beer, is fucking rubbish, even in cans. It's dog shit, mate. 5% bollocks, not having that. That's going to get a 2 out of 10. If you drink Heineken, then if that's your regular drink, then what the fuck are you doing on this channel? No, that's a lie. I will, no, I'll take that back. If you drink Heineken on a regular basis and you're watching this, look at some of my other videos. There's a what? Who the fuck? Where's that lyric from a song come? There's a whole world waiting out there for you. Fuck no, it's probably some two bob fucking shit pop song. But there's a whole world of beer better than this stuff. Stop fucking ruining your lives with crap like this. So there you go, that's going to get a 2 out of 10. And I'm giving it 2 because if it's ice cold in a really hot country and there is nothing else and you're literally drinking it so it stays ice cold all the way through, then I could probably just about stomach it. I'd question why this was the only beer available, but that's by the by. So that's going to get a 2 out of 10 and I'm being fucking generous there. And... I'm never going to buy this shit again. I haven't bought this in years, and even when I was not reviewing beer and I didn't know much about beer, I would not drink this bollocks because it was piss. Some people say the Heineken is better over in Amsterdam. All I remember about Amsterdam is it was fucking expensive, and that's all I remember. So there you go. And if I was over in the, in the Netherlands, I'd be seeking out the trap or some other half decent beer, not the Bavaria stuff. Someone asked me the other day, will I review Grosch? I can't remember who, oh, it was the fella, Kev, Kev Goes Wandering. He's a subscriber on the channel. We asked, will I review Grosch? I ain't seen it, mate. I've only seen it on, on tap. I ain't seen it in the cans. You just can't buy the cans no more. No one buys it, because it's pony, mate. But there you go, two out of 10, not recommended. And remember, I'm not drinking this shit, so you don't have to.